This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. It's been a busy week, busy weekend, but I like it. I'm excited. I, I think the judges are uh, experts in what they do and they're gonna see um, just the amount of quality that everyone has brought to the table and it's gonna be a really tough decision for them. Um, you know, I'm here for the opportunity and I met a lot of great people and so if I win, great, and if I don't, um, I'm still gonna keep moving forward with Bruin USA because I think it's got a lot of steam and a lot of momentum behind it. Hey Adam, thanks so much for coming to show us Bruin USA. Thank you for the opportunity, I'm super excited to be here. Can you give us like a really quick pitch of the game? Sure, Bruin USA is a lighter Euro game, uh, plays two to five players under 60 minutes. Um, players act as a startup brewery at the inception of the craft beer revolution. Players are tasked to collect key resources, uh, launch a product line of liquid gold or craft beer, and while strategically competing for region control across the nation. Let's meet uh, our liquid gold. These are the judges who will be playing your game. Uh, to my left, we have Paul Peterson, creator of Smash Up and Guillotine, and Elisa Delfo, the retail manager of Card Kingdom, Rodney Thompson, designer of Lords of Waterdeep, Mike Selinker, creator of the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, Luke Crane, creator of Mouse Guard and Burning Wheel, and Sherry Spiro, president and founder of Ad Magic. You want to come over and set up your game so we can take a look? Sure thing. All right. Adam, uh, so can you tell us a little bit about um, designing this prototype and, and bringing it to this point? Who, who are you working with? Um, in terms of the artwork and illustration, I've been working with Machinaro and Chris Gibbons. Did you get experience working with them? It looks like you guys put a pretty cool looking um, prototype together. We, we had quite the experience, I would say. Um, Maki and Chris really stepped up with, uh, you know, they were able to commit assets to me and really just blew it out of the park, like knocked my socks off cool, so. The prototype looks awesome. I can't wait to uh, see the game and imagine all of the delicious beers that will be made. Um, so I'm going to step back and let you um, run through a few rounds with the judges. Cool. Okay, so in the rule book, the, the first player that, to, to move is the last person to have bonged a beer. So this is the Game Ball Craft Beer, and so if you're bonging beers, you need to go first. My mom does. It's been a long but... time. It's be I bet it's you, though. Uh, you think so? I'm in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's re more recent. It's 12 years ago. I think you're it, Rodney. Oh, okay. Yeah. It may have been within the last 12 years, but I don't know I don't that for that a fact. <laughs> well, we'll edit that embarrassing fact out in post. I like the theme a lot. I was really surprised how much I liked it. There's no difficulty getting into it because I've got some experience. All right, so I guess let's uh, fire this up. We're gonna draw one and do we replace immediately? Replace immediately. Okay. And then be able to draw one more, right? Yes. Okay. So you can pick up one and draw one? Yeah, you, you could pick up a face one, face up one, you can, and then you can draw a face down one. Can you pick up one. two face? You can pick up two face up, you can pick up two face down. I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, but it's basically the Ticket to Ride mechanism. Uh, a lot's been said about comparing Bruin USA to Ticket to Ride, and I think that they both have a very similar feel to them, but that's pretty much where the similarity ends. And so uh, it, it, I think that the comparison is a little off there. They both feel very similar, which is why it's easy to draw that, but I, in the end, I, they're very dissimilar games. When a player launches a beer, they're, they're encouraged to name it as well, so if you have some crazy additives going into it, like we can be a little fun about I love that. that. Right? It's like Sitcloth beer. Or like... Yeah. Oh, I like this. That's really like sick coffee. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. I you think, launch. I think we're gonna launch a beer. Which one are we launching? All right, let's let's see if we screw it up. We, all right. Uh, well, we're more contesting it, testing it right now. Yeah. So it's a coffee stout. Uh, it's we don't know yet. We're, 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 <laughs> no, it, if it had citrus, then I Well, I haven't said it has anything yet. I like playing Brew in USA because it was easy to play. And I liked the interaction between the judges when we were playing. I thought we had a good time, and uh, I enjoyed the beer puns. So we could go here, we could go here, yeah. we could go here, we could go there. That one has 
three. Yeah. So oh. you get two in that area, you get the sure. majority. Remind me what it's the cunning businesswoman over here. Just saying. Oh. I think it's worth noting here that I don't drink beer. I don't like beer, I don't drink beer. I don't like beer culture. I don't like beer bongs or bros or any of that stuff. So it was interesting for, for me to see the, the thematic barrier flip in this game where the theme didn't interest me at all. Um, it was easy for me to walk in and, and play it and, and, uh, and enjoy it. Yeah, nice launch. And you launched a beer, so you're gonna play some bottle cap on it right away. And so that now is a 12 quality beer, but it's actually plus one because it has a bottle cap. So anytime you're in a brew so fest, 13. it's already at 13. Wait, yeah. Yeah, they, they launched it with an extra citrus. And an extra, citru and an extra citrus, citrus and so you coffee. Got additional. Two? Additional one. You are the first one in the region, too, so you get an additional two bottle caps on this beer. So this okay, is a, this is a mega beer. beer. Right. And wow, you are you're an Uber player there. And you actually you control the region now, yeah, and so this is your card. We're gonna launch into Portland. We have we're thinking we have about our name. we have our grain. We're very efficient. We have our hops. A little bit too much water, but we'll fix that in later. But we've just exactly the right amount of yeast. Maybe it should be efficient pale ale. <laughs> okay, so we have our efficient pale ale into Portland. Wow, so you get one cool. bottle cap on that right away. I'm going to Portland, so I'll try it next week. Yeah. And you're because you're the first. Two more for the exactly. Did uh, Game Crafter do oh, the? So uh, this is from my own homebrew store, actually. So, uh, I mean, I, I think it's a really important component of the game because it, it's so tactile, but it's relevant. Did too. they come like this? They did. I love the bottle caps. Uh, they're an inexpensive component, but they add a, a genuine feel to the uh, theme of the game. And overall, I just uh, I think it's a, a very simple game to manufacture, and when it's done right, it should come out fantastic. So how, how long ago did you come up with this idea? So um, I, I was newly on the idea a few months ago, but I actually was listening to a podcast and I heard about Tabletop Deathmatch, refreshed my memory, and I said, I wonder what, where this thing is this year? And it was literally a week before the competition submission. And then I got the email and I was like, oh crap. Now a week? Now I have to really nail this sucker out, yeah. You did this in a week? I mean, you had the idea of kind yeah. of brewing, yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, well, and so, a big part of you know getting your feedback is playtesting, right? And so I have a I have a great gaming group at work that I leverage for excellent feedback um, on some of like the Brewfest events and mechanics, and just making it interactive because I think that's the downside of you know a lot of the Euro games or you know even the lighter Euro games like you want interaction, right? So you really pushed the mechanics in the last week? Yeah, yeah. I You're think kidding. we had three or four different designs in the last week. Yeah. Awesome. That is really uh, that's like a. You know what it reminds me of? Like a stroke of inspiration. <laughs> like when you write a song. Like I, I, I've, you know, I've it's written like a song a in five minutes. It's a, it's a stroke of inspiration. Absolutely. But you had thought about it before. You just didn't have it all together. Exactly. How much playtesting have you done overall? Uh, I think 11 total now. Um, and with 30, 31 different people. The number one thing I would do for this game is I would play test it and play test it and play test it. I mean, it's close and it's in really good shape, but the, the level of polish that you'll get just from a little bit of extra play will be worth it in the end because you'll take this game from something that is good and people enjoy to something that's great and people are recommending to their friends and people are giving out as gifts. I think so. Hey guys. Hello. Are we Sorry stuck with it? I figured we might want to get you guys in the mood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sometimes, yes. Yes, cards against humanity for something, they'll deliver. All right, now, now we can play the game. Is there any reason not to throw every every adjunct that you have? You know, I, you know, I, I don't think there is. I think late in the game it's a little more powerful because you can actually keep adding and adding and adding, and then you're gonna get basically a sure winner, like almost a surefire win late in the game, and that may upset one of those regional control situations that is really on the border. You could really get value out of a whole lot more testing a whole lot more analysis of what people are doing inside each turn and how much they uh, spend in terms of their resources and whether or not it's valuable to put a tax on overshooting the amounts that are supposed to be the cards on the cards and so forth. There's there's a lot of little things you could do to make that game better. It's pretty darn good now, but I, I have this feeling that it's a, a totally fun, playable game right now, and it could be a classic if they put Maybe puts just a little more, more work into it. This is not a criticism, but I, I, I must admit that as I don't brew beer, but I sure drink a lot of it. I don't really want to drink a, 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 a pumpkin berry citrus coffee beer. I can tell it's strategically valuable to me to get that pile, yes. but there must be something that if you're a, a brewer and you see that being played in the game, 
you might have some sort of cognitive dissonance where it's like, that's not really what you would make. You should be forced to drink the concoction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's funny. So um, I guess what I can say to that too is like, I think there's a balance between being true to the, to the hobby uh, or the profession versus being approachable for the market. No, it's all good. I just, I'm worried about you taking it into, like I have made the perfect beer, <laughs> perfect game for brewery festivals and people say, we don't make that, mm -hmm. right? Beer, they, might get the yeah. they might get the joke. All right, well, now that we've uh, we've all gotten good and drunk, I think we're gonna kick you out in the hallway and we're gonna uh, hang on to your prototype and we'll uh, chat about the game for a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. I think uh, I think they really enjoyed the theme, which I was hoping. Um, I was, you know, I was kind of praying for it. And, and they're beer enthusiasts, which is great. I'm impressed with the judges' reaction, I'm impressed with how uh, how engaged they were with the game. I mean, it's, it's been a long day for them, and they're still, like, right on it. Judges, it seems like uh, you guys you guys played and discussed this game for nearly an hour. It seems like a pretty successful play test. <laughs> I liked it. I really like this game. I, I have to say that when we were ranking all the games, that this one, I, I thought it was going to be a lot more Euro and a lot more complicated, and I really wasn't looking forward to this. But this, this game is really good and really sort of smooth and fast, and I, I really like it. Euro games are games that are generally have a lot of complicated rules and a lot of components. It often means a kind of non-confrontational economic game. Usually involving abstract mechanics, bidding, worker placement. The types of players who like them really get satisfaction from learning the depth of the game. It was fun to name the beers yes. and it was easy to learn, you know, I'm a casual gamer, it was easy for me to learn and you guys had a good time so I had a good time and it was, you know. I'm a casual gamer too but I felt um, very competitive at yes. the gates. Oh, yes. Yeah. A casual game is a game that is likely low on rules. You don't have to take it that seriously. Pop it out on any surface and it only takes a few minutes to play a couple rounds. It's a game that a lay person can play. Do you guys think there's any strategy in this game? I hit sort of a point when I sort of saw what you guys were doing and I'm like, I'm not gonna drop a lot of beers on the market with what I've got currently. What I have to do is hoard the really big cards and see if I can get two or three beers on the market that are unassailable, right? That you just cannot come into my house and knock out. And so, I don't know if that strategy works, but it did, over a small sample size, it did make me think differently about uh, how I was playing versus how you guys were playing. I mean, I do equate what's going on on the board with a simple combat mechanic, and I was, if this had been the right beer to launch, I would have gone into San Antonio with a slightly stronger against a slightly weaker, taken that away from him, even if it was just making it neutral, right? So I think there is strategy to board placement and things like that. So just looking at this game uh, from the more strategic perspective and just kind of fanning out these cards, taking a superficial look at them, I'm not confident in the values or uh, the value of that 15 yeah, uh, card ahead, versus yeah. like this 13, uh, you know, and the difficulty. Uh, I, I think that that would be something that, you know, someone would have to take him into the shop and actually I, yeah, work I, out. I think you're absolutely right, but like, the total number here equals the total number of victory points is like, I think, kind of a brilliant first pass at, at making cards, yeah. right? There's a magical universe behind the, the, those beautiful colors on the cards. The, the world of numbers. Uh, and it's really easy to put those numbers on the cards and be like, this feels good, this feels great. And to kind of create the illusion of uh, depth or, or, um, or strategy. We got kind of hung up on the mathematical analysis of it, and I think it's I think it's good to do it, um, but I don't think it was really far off. I mean, Luke was doing a lot of really complex analysis, and I think that was worth doing. But I felt like when I looked at the high end cards, it was about right, and I felt like when I looked at the no, low end cards, it was about right, and so. I think that the analysis that Adam has done is probably pretty close. I actually really agreed with Luke that there's not a whole lot of strategy. I think the randomness inherent in the game eliminates a lot of strategic play. It's still very tactical, and that's great. But, you know, right now, there's not a lot of long-term thinking that you can do in the game. And you can do, what is it, like Marijuana USA, but it'd just be like Denver and Seattle. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Just be actually, oh my God. Be two places, though. So you'd be like, here's my game, just Denver and, you, and Seattle, and would be like, well, no. <laughs> I, I have to go to a other. computer with a Kickstarter. <laughs> if I have only one knock against the game, it's the map. Um, yeah. I feel like something a little cartoony or, or, yeah. or whatever. Disproportionate right? risk style map yeah. is probably the way to or, go. Or even if you're going to divide it into regions, like the more high contrast lines are actually the state lines, which mm -hmm. don't need to be there. Even though the, the locations are displaced, there is. Um, 
there's a usage factor for this game that uh, I think he's taken into account, and you have to be able to play a drunk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very, and very like that's why there, you know, there's a lot of space between those those regions. Uh, that, that, I mean, that could be, the, but that could be <laughs> Missoula, right? I, I, I feel you, but yeah. you know, we got to make compromises. Exactly. In the design. I think the graphic design is solid. Um, I think it's a little generic. I don't. I think. I guess I feel like in general, the, the game design and the graphic design is struggling to to find its voice and say something, and that it doesn't have um, a, a quite as much of a point of view as I would want for something that should be sort of like light and funny and thematic as Bruin USA. Like it's neither a bro drinking game or a craft drinking game. It's like somewhere in this uncomfortable middle. And I and I, I would have more fun with it if it would commit and, and let me like play into that theme more. This is the exact kind of game where it's like simple enough um, and easy enough to get into that you want to take it out to the bar or take it out with you and play, but it's just too big. Like I can't imagine sitting at a bar table with all this stuff going on in a hand of 20 cards. I'm pretty sure we might be able to play this game without the board entire, just with the decks of cards, true. just making just making loggers and make a different sort of win condition. And it, it loses out on this, but you could play it at the, like, I as it is line. pretty close. You could roll you could out play a plastic the, sheet too. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, Sure. You know, what I'm just saying that you might just be able to take the cards to the bar with you and play on the bar while you you're just have location video. cards, How oversized awesome. location yeah. cards. Oversized too. location yeah. cards. That makes sense. How awesome would this game be built into a table at a bar? <laughs> yeah. Or even better, Bruin Seattle, yeah. right? You know, like a, 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 a USA Opoly kind of thing. Yeah, and then right? there's West Seattle and North. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like, like Bruin Mike's Bruin basement. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm not an expert, but. Um, uh, I'm, I'm Bruin card against humanity office. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. But yeah, I mean, like, this is a really marketable game. But I do think that one of the negatives here is that this is a little bit niche. It's more niche than a lot of the games we're sure. looking at. They're just a huge, not even, not even like people who don't drink beer for religious reasons or anything, but just people who are like, oh, it's a beer game. I, I'm not that interested. Which even I would if be it has good it. mechanics, yeah. right? Well, one, one thing I didn't agree with was the idea that this was like a niche game, or even that even if it is a niche game, that that's necessarily a bad thing. Like, it's great to be a niche game because that means that the game speaks to someone. Like, if a game is all things to everyone, then it's not special to anyone. Uh, I, I do not think this game is niche, or there needs to be any kind of special marketing considerations aside from get it out there. I think it would be really easy to sell. Um, let's uh, get him back in here and let him know what we thought of the game. Hey Adam, thanks so much for showing us Bruin USA. We were really impressed by the game. Thank you. For a first design effort, we really think it has a lot of solid qualities. We really love the bottle caps and thought that was a great element. Uh, we do feel though that managing your hand with that many cards in it can be quite complex. And we're not certain that the strategies of the games or necessarily the point values of the cards have been fully developed or explored. Thanks, we'll see you back for final judging. Thanks so much. It was good, it was good. They had some good feedback. Um, they, they also had some concerns, and I think I had some you know, of the same concerns coming here. Given the design about a week um, of thought before the competition, given it about another you know, 40, 45 hours of thought since, but I think you know, there's still a little polishing left to do. Mm -hmm.